In this video, I want to briefly state the definition of a proposition and make eight introductory points about propositions. And then finally, I want to conclude with a brief puzzle for you to consider. So let's start with the definition. A proposition is typically defined as the non-linguistic entity, often expressed by a sentence, that is capable of being true or false, or at least taking a truth value. In other words, propositions are taken to be the primary bearers of truth or falsity. A very rough but intuitive test to see if a sentence expresses a proposition is simply to utter the sentence, then imagine someone saying true or false to it, and see if the result sounds strange. If it sounds strange, then it's not a proposition. But if it sounds fine, then maybe you have a proposition. Again, this is a rough test. Next, now that we have this initial or preliminary definition of a proposition, I wanna make eight points about propositions. All of these pro points are introductory, so I'll put a list of further reading about propositions in the description. The first point I wanna make about propositions is that propositions are not the same thing as a sentence, although we commonly express propositions using sentences. Token instances of sentences have a physical existence. They're found in space and time, they exist in terms of being ink marks on a piece of paper or characters on a computer screen or a sequence of sound. Sentences can also be destroyed. We can burn the paper that has ink on it. We can delete the sentence off of our computer screen or we can destroy the recording of the sound. But propositions are taken to be more abstract. There's something that is expressed by the sentences that don't exist in space and time and so can't really be destroyed. Second, it's natural to think our cognitive attitudes, such as belief and doubt, are about propositions. Consider that many beliefs and doubts are about something. They have an object, but one question we might ask is, what are they about? They are certainly not about facts, since sometimes I have false beliefs, and it makes no sense to say that there are false facts. The fact that grass is green couldn't really exist unless grass was green but the proposition that grass is green could exist since propositions can be false. It also makes no sense to say that my beliefs and doubts are about sentences. Suppose I say, I believe snow is white. I don't mean to say I believe the sentence, that is the linguistic entity. Instead, what I mean to say is that I believe what the sentence expresses, this non-linguistic entity is true. Given that propositions seem to be the objects of cognitive attitudes like belief and doubt, we have another rough test for determining if a sentence expresses a proposition. We simply take the sentence, preface it with a cognitive attitude followed by a that clause, and check to see if the result sounds right. For example, I can test to see if snow is white expresses a proposition by writing, I believe that snow is white. If the sentence is natural, then snow is white expresses a proposition. And if it's unnatural, then chances are you don't have a proposition here. Third, intuitively not all sentences express propositions. Questions, exclamatory utterances, and commands do not seem to express propositions. For example, suppose someone asks, where is the door? It would be strange to respond true or false. And it is even stranger if we were to rewrite the sentence by prefacing it with a cognitive attitude followed by a that clause. In other words, if I were to take the sentence, where is the door, and then rewrite it as, I believe that, where is the door, we would say that the result sounds crazy. It sounds really odd. So the chances are that this question here is not a proposition, even though it is a sentence. Fourth, there are many different ways to express the same proposition. I might write, John loves Liz, or Liz is loved by John, and I take myself to express the same proposition, the same content, to the same non-linguistic entity. Similarly, if I speak multiple languages and express my belief that snow is white in those different languages, I take myself to have expressed the same thing. In other words, sentences do not stand in a one-to-one -one correspondence with propositions, since many sentences can express one proposition. Fifth, propositions are said to be shareable. If I say snow is white, in virtue of your understanding of the context in which the sentence is uttered and the meaning of the words, you can know what I'm talking about. You can know the proposition I'm referring to, and then you can take an attitude towards it. Six. In order for a sentence to express a proposition, it only needs to be the type of thing that can take a truth value. This does not imply that we know the truth value of all propositions. I don't know if there are 10 million trees in New York, 
I don't know if this is true or false, but the sentence, there are 10 million trees in New York, expresses a proposition. In short, you don't need to know the truth value of a proposition to know if something is a proposition. Seventh, it's mistaken to think that propositions can only be expressed by words on a page or words spoken aloud. We can express propositions in all sorts of different ways without using words. For example, let's say there is a painting I didn't like. I might point to the painting, make a disgusted looking face, and gesture to you in a way that indicates my displeasure with the painting. Here, even though I haven't uttered a word, you have a clear sense of the proposition I am expressing. Eighth, you might think that all of this sounds kind of speculative, but our natural language seems to commit us to the existence of propositions. In other words, there is evidence that you must accept the existence of propositions, even if you've never really thought about them. Consider that we say things like the following. These two sentences say the same thing. Tech said that snow is white, and so there is something that Tech said. There are things that are true that no one knows. There is something that Tech believes about snow. There are necessary truths. The truth of these sentences seems to commit us to the existence of entities that are the meanings of sentences, that are true or false, entities that are believed, and entities that are necessarily true. In addition, there is evidence that the entities that fulfill these roles are the same thing, that is, a, there are propositions. For example, I might say, there is something that tech believes and it is false. Here I am referring to one thing that is both the object of tech's belief and a bearer of truth and falsity. I want to conclude with a brief argument about propositions for you to consider, so I'm interested to know your thoughts. Take the proposition, snow is white. The definition of a proposition and this particular proposition does not imply the existence of any being with a mind. So it doesn't apply the existence of mental states. The proposition would exist regardless of anyone thinking it. If it is possible that the proposition snow is white is true in the absence of all minds or mental states, then it possibly exists in the absence of all minds. So even though I might express or be thinking of the proposition that snow is white, the existence of this proposition doesn't depend upon me thinking it. And if it can possibly exist in the absence of all minds, then this proposition is some abstract or mind-independent thing. But if propositions are abstract, then at least on one definition of the meaning of abstract, these propositions are outside of space and time. But we exist in space and time. And so if propositions are outside of space and time, one question we might consider is, how is it possible we can know propositions if we can't causally interact with them? 